Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including The Lion King 2019, which we'll be talking about today. I'm your host, Dallas Bonilla, and today I'm joined by... <laughs> no one wanted did, to did join you forget in on that. how to do it? No, you have to say like our names first. <laughs> That's not right. how it works, Alex. Well, I wanted oh, you to sing your just... name, but fine. Today I've joined oh my Oh my god, you, you could have... I, fa- oh, I ruined hi. the bit. <laughs> no, you're oh. keeping this in. You better keep this in. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> um, today I'm joined by Sam Quattro and, and Sarah Potter. Hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, as I eloquently described it, we are talking about The Lion King 2019. Um, you can follow this podcast at EverlyAnimated.com, where you can find our previous discussion on various animated films, including the original version of The Lion King, uh, without really any singing. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes at EverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes. You can find us on YouTube at YouTube.com slash EverlyAnimated. And wherever you listen to us, we always appreciate any ratings and reviews you want to leave us. But yeah, if you if you're a listener to Over the Animated podcast, you heard our discussion about the original version of The Lion King from the 1990s, where we went really deep into the plots, details of the movie, and we talked a little bit about our expectations and worries for this for the 2019 version, which came out uh, last week, as of the time of this recording. And uh, we're here to talk about our reactions to this uh, remake, this uh, photorealistic re- remake of the movie. Uh, let's and also uh, spoilers. I think we're not really going to worry about. It. Like we're going to go right into spoilers since again, The Lion King is yeah. a story that you all know. So <laughs> uh, we're just going to go. Uh, this big like all, all all is available so if if you are interested in watching the new lion king uh, before get knowing what's different and what's the same then you should go watch that before listening to us but with that said let's go to sam first how do you feel about the lion king 2019 now that we have finally watched it now that it exists i don't have too many feelings on this so If you want just, like, the quick summary, it's the same exact movie, but worse. Um, How I'm going to elaborate on that, uh, let's just say that the things that they chose to change in regards to, of course, making the animation is the most pressing thing. Um, That, and I'll say the voice direction... Those were my two main gripes as to why this is worse and how it just kind of pokes a lot of holes into the plot of the original, which, you know, 1994 Lion King was not the best movie plot wise. There's a lot of pacing issues, Um, a lot of spaces where, you know, things could have been more fleshed out, but it was like an 88 minute movie or so, whatever. It was fine. Then, you know, you had pretty animation to look at. You had pretty good acting to listen to, etc. But since those elements are kind of missing from this version, it feels hollow and not good. All right. All right. Um, Sarah, how how, how did you feel about this? Um, I think I generally feel very similar to Sam about the movie. I don't think it's for the same reasons, though, because I hesitate to say it's because of the voice actors or the voice direction, um, as, as you said, Sam, because I personally think the issue is that this movie is pulling in like four different directions and it can't be all the things it's trying to be. It's trying to be this gritty movie, a version of the Lion King, but it still has these upbeat, like musical songs that just don't fit with the tone they're trying to do with the animals. The animals now have, don't have these anthropomorphized faces that can um, emote in ways that, uh, real animals can't but they have these full animals that can like show some emotions really well like these real these real life looking lions can really show fear a lot better than they could in the 1994 version but you can't really have these complex emotions like grief show on the face of a real lion and that's a problem um 
and then you have this where um uh i forget the other thing you said sam but you said something about uh the pacing sorry the pacing yeah the pacing is um i think the issue with the pacing here is that they added things to sections to as if to like fix the pacing but then we still jump so fast between things that some scenes are just so short when they really need to be longer and they expanded parts that really just didn't need expansion we didn't need like minutes more time spent on um simba's mom dealing with scar like we didn't need that we needed more time with like we needed more time on uh the transition from and to the area with timon and pumbaa instead we get like an immediate shift from Simba being all Hakuna Matata to fighting Scar, and there's no transition, essentially. And that's still here, even though we added, like, 30 minutes to this film. Right. There's a lot of things like that. I, I'll get more into it as I go, but my, my point is that there's a lot of things pulling at this movie, and it makes it less than the whole because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can definitely. I think as we'll talk about it, I think that uh, that feeling will come more out because uh, I feel the same way. Where it's like things that are different. Some of them are in, are interesting and feel like, oh, yeah. okay, like you're actually trying something here. But for a lot of the movie. It, you can't help but like feel like this is kind of just a remix. It's a cover version of the, of the movie, and it feels it feels very strange to watch a movie like that from like the, from the very beginning of the Circle of Life sequence where it's exactly the same. Like you you remember how you felt feel watching it in the original version, and so when you have that in your in your in your mind, and you're watching it in front of you like this photorealistic thing like you appreciate the the artistry of creating this but also if you have right in your head that they're doing the same exact thing like it kind of messes with you in terms of like how you're watching the movie at least for me and that that feeling kind of drips into the re- into the rest of the movie where there's so many lines that are pulled that are pulled almost uh, verbatim from from the original so it's like, oh, I remember how the, this part of the movie where the character said this, and like you can like replay it in your head as the actual like new movie is right in front of you. So it's it's very strange that the uh, the, uh, the animation itself, I would argue, is very pretty, and I I still believe that there is a place for something like this in terms of uh, cr- creating uh, remaking a, a movie in this totally new style. Like there, there's something to that, and there's definitely some pr- some beautiful shots in here. The issue is with the story. There's not a, there's not enough the divergence made to warrant it being its own thing. Uh, there are a few a few other positives. Uh, I'm, I mean, we'll 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 talk about them. But like, I enjoyed Timon and Pumbaa in this version as well. I think that. Uh, there's a lot of issues with Scar, but there, there's like maybe one or two things I could pick out that I like about this. So this, the, 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 there's like stuff in here, but because like Lion King, you're starting from a, something that's re- that it has its issues, as we mentioned in the original podcast. It's, it's it's problematic in a lot of different ways, but it also has a lot of emotionally ca- captivating parts. And so when you're building on something like that, obviously that translate this is basically a translation and the translation is still going to have some vestiges of the uh, of the of the meat of the original but it it definitely feels uh, it definitely feels like a translation something gets lost in translation sometimes and that's that's kind of the general feeling that i got watching this well i i i can can we jump off from there because i think that that like there there was stuff in here that was good that there is good here and that's kind of what makes me more upset than anything because i think there is um some actual things they do here that are really commendable because i thought that sequences like um uh i'm gonna be a mighty king and stuff like that that song just doesn't work in this new style they're doing but be prepared i was so upset when i heard be prepared on the soundtrack but in the movie it works great like the way Mm. they changed that sequence just feels great and it's menacing and it's ominous and it feels like it fits the world that they're animating like i really think that's great but they didn't realize that they need to do that for pretty much every sequence of the movie like it doesn't work when like you have all these 
peppy, happy songs when the animals can't really express that energy in the same way, or you're not willing to let your set pieces move in that way that has it like, like, you know what I mean? You, you, um, you need to do something to match that energy of the singing or it just doesn't really fit. Mm -hmm. Sam, how, how do you feel about how the, how the musical sequences were, were translated in this? Uh, I also don't feel very good about it. Um, I just can't wait to be king. Of course, I was kind of like the, I wouldn't call it the centerpiece, but it was definitely one of the most visually exciting parts of the first, well, not the yeah, first, definitely. obviously, but the, the, the original movie, you know, with the bright colors and the just, you know, sequences with all the animals and the big animal tower. And you kind of replace that with two lion cubs running around a watering hole with a bunch of different animals around, which, okay, fine. If you want to translate it to that. I get it. It serves the same point as the Drag Zazu, so they can go off to elephant, uh, the elephant graveyard. Um, but for me, the part that really kind of did not hit its mark was "Can You Feel the Love Tonight." Oh my god! Oh We're my god! Oh god! That's mm, just so much like, is not working for me with the song itself, which. I don't know if we want to talk about that now or later, but in terms of the sequence, it was just like all wide shot, almost yep. no close ups. And of course, you know, since they're photorealistic lines, you can't have like things like Simba playfully smirking at Nala and like acting like a goofball. And you can't have the whole like, you know, lustful looks that the lions give each other in the yeah. press. Hey, hey but Which... Nala licked Simba's face. That was romantic. She, al <laughs> she also did that in the original, but it yeah. just felt like, you know, a, I don't want to say more safe version of it, but it felt like, oh, we can't give these animals um, more of a human one-to-one -one facial expression. So let's just pull it out wide and just have them walk up to this well, cliff because while the, they sing. But, but the thing is that they did that because they wanted to give them, like, the actual mating patterns of lions. And the thing is, they did that and they didn't think, wait, is this good? Like, they, they went for accurate instead of thinking about creatively what it does for the audience. Yeah. The, and do, like, are lions romantic? They're, they're ro I think there's some romance here. It's just not in a way that's, like, as evocative as using an actual, like, anthropomorphized slightly animal. Like, like I get that these lions are definitely, like, mates, but they're not, like, there's not romance in a human way there. You can't feel the love tonight. No, them. and... I'm not like we have to mention that it's during the day, but I mean, literally <laughs> everyone on the internet has mentioned that, and it's oh, just oh wow, I didn't even notice <laughs> you didn't like this song <laughs> no. starts in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, there's just daylight all around this sequence. I <laughs> and, mean, like, to be and fair, like it like, is says, like or, or like this like Timon says the sweet caress of twilight or evening or something, and it's just like bright it's day. It, yeah, it, it, and, it's it's very upsetting. Yeah, it's. Wow, I can't believe I didn't even notice that. That's just I put that in the list of reasons why the scene doesn't work for me. It's yeah. daytime. But I mean like but I mean like that's still not like a problem with like how they set it up. That's just like an oversight. But I think it's just like one of those things that like you see it and you're like, how did this get missed in production? Like how did you miss this? It didn't make this scene bad, but it just added to the overall feeling of me watching this and going like, why didn't anybody point this out when it was in fo like focus testing or when you were like showing it to anybody why did no one say hey why is the song singing about nighttime and the sun's like in the middle of the sky yeah it's like 3 p.m or so like even if you've never seen the original movie it's just really weird yeah uh... yeah but I, I don't. I don't think we should. I don't think there's a need to like stick on this. This feels like a nitpick, even though it's really frustrating. Like, well, I, I think it reflects the issues with the rest of the movie, right? Because it, it jet. Well, there, this was like a lot of details where you know how it's done in the original movie, and so when you're seeing all these mis all these um not mistakes, but just like differences that don't fit with the tone, you you're differences you're, you're, for the sake of being different, right? Right. Not because like I said, like be prepared. That sequence, that sequence is different, and I think it benefits from that. Yeah, I well, totally agree with that. Like, like there, there are ways to make differences. And, and also, I think the scene where Simba and Nala are running from the hyenas—that's a genuinely like blood pumping scene when they're in those little holes and they're running away. Like, that's a good difference. But they don't, they don't. They, but I, they just made differences everywhere 
across the board. So sometimes they're going to get it right when they change something. Like, that's just how I feel from this. Like, mm-hmm. eventually you'll get some differences right if you change literally everything. Uh, I, I'm I'm interested that both of you enjoy the be prepared sequence because I'm kind of the opposite where I enjoyed it when I heard the soundtrack because I was like oh okay this is like kind of an angrier take on the song like that's interesting but then when you see it visually like he's just kind of like walking around from ledge to ledge but he like walks but... up the mountain and like uh, maybe uh, again like this is me like unable to disconnect myself from the original where it's like mountains rising from the sky like it feels a lot more villainous. Whereas here it kind of feels very nonchalant because of the fact that we're sticking to making it as realistic as possible. Well, okay. That, this is why I'm – like, let me talk about this then. Did you like the sequences of, like, um, Hakuna Matata and um, Gonna Be a Mighty King? Like, did you like those sequences or did they feel like they had less energy? They, they than... had less energy because also Hakuna Matata has the same issue where they're just, yeah. like, walking yeah. in well, a straight I'll, I'll line for, for a minute and a half. But, but I want, I'm just trying to make a point with Be Prepared before we move on. It's just uh-huh. that um, I think that, like – the reason they don't work is that you can't do this with the live action things. You need to change it a little bit. You need to do like when during they um, they did a couple things in um, I'm going to be a mighty king where they like uh, there's this shot when the giraffe walks out from in front of the sun and he's like I'm going to stand spotlight and like the sun comes from behind the giraffe and that's a cool set thing that you didn't have in the animation and if you did a bunch of stuff like that in the sequence it would still have this interesting imagery it would be exciting but they chose to just be as close to them being animals as possible but it it, it just doesn't work with the original song and the same is true of be prepared you can't have hyenas goose goose marching or goose stepping and um if they're real life hyenas so they adapted it they made it slower they made it more methodical as he's explaining his plan and every time they turn the camera there's more hyenas there it's more foggy it's more dark and he just slowly climbs up above them as they get as they gain faith behind scar like this is how you change a musical this is how you it's i agree it's not the same thing as be prepared i don't love it as much as i love the original villainous song but this is how you have to change a musical if you're going to change the tone of it you need to change the tone of the songs too or the songs just feel like they're complete asides from the entire story like the other songs just like don't fit this movie they just don't because they're not from this movie be prepared. It was made for this movie, and it works. Mm-hmm. And yet, for for some reason, in this version, like it kind of feels almost like sho- shoehorned in because, of, at least to me, of like how, how like weird it feels. I don't know. Oh. Like it worked really good for me, Alex. I don't know. Like mm-hmm. maybe I guess I guess like obviously like we we people have different opinions and stuff. Like that's yeah, fine. It's yeah. just like, but it's like I don't know when. I see this, it just, this is what I want from a music, musical remake. I don't want you to do the same songs over and over again because, with, with no changes, because, like, if you, it, or if you're changing everything and you don't change the songs, like, you didn't do anything. Because the musical just, it, the music needs to be part of the musical. And the songs here really aren't. They're just songs that they threw into a different movie at this point. Uh, Sam, were you going to jump in there? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the reason why this version of Be Prepared works for me and sort of how at least Scar's whole plot works for me in the first half of the movie is that it feels like it makes more sense in the narrative. Like, why was he teaming up with the hyenas in the first movie? Why was he just, like, best buddies yeah. with them in the, first, in the original? I don't know. And having that sort of, like, explained as him sort of being a little bit desperate and coming to them for help and sort of being like, you know, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, et cetera, et cetera. I like that exchange. And I felt like, you know, it added more depth to this movie where, you know, the movie sort of did need that. Not, I mean, the original, whatever, it's fine. But this, you know, since they're kind of be trying to be more hashtag serious and real, yeah. you know, I felt like of all the additions, that was probably my favorite. And that's what worked best for me narratively. Uh, but, you know, I could see where you're coming from, Alex, because, you know, I know that the original Be Prepared is your favorite song. Um, I mean, it, for good uh, reason. It's amazing. Yeah, and, and it's very, you know, bombastic and, like, very um, call to action, while this one is more, you know, more of, like, a convincing sort of, uh, I don't know, not really a rallying cry, but more of a... Um, what would you say? Well, like a, re- it, a like an agreement. Pitch, almost, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's almost recruiting speech, recruitment speech. Yeah, and I, I think that this also ties into the fact that Scar feels very, very, very toned down in this version of the mo- uh, of, of the movie. Like uh, Scar in the original feels very, very theatrical of a villain throughout, and like that's why Be Prepared works so well because it is performed theatrically as well. But he's also that way throughout the entire movie. Whereas here he feels very quiet, very, uh, uh, very, um, you know, t- tamped down. Uh, we we add this stuff to his to his backstory in terms of, like him actually having fought Mufasa in the past. While he's king, he's trying to get Saravi onto his side and like to get make make her his queen. So we're like we're we're adding stuff to him, but but for some reason he feels less menacing in this version. Again, maybe this uh, this is a, a fact that because he's not anthropomorphic, like he's not able to give me uh, he's just expressions not. that that are uh, that are angry. And I mean, Ch- Chiwetel Ejiofor is a good actor elsewhere, but like he's not really giving much energy to this performance. At least that I, yeah, I don't think that's him. It, for so. the record, I don't think that's him. I think that's just the. It's hard to get across energy when you're when you don't have a face. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like voice yeah. acting is hard, but when the vo- when the animation's not on your side, giving your character that you're voicing that energy that you're giving across in your acting, like like. If you listen to the soundtrack of this movie, like you listen to Akuna Matata, you listen to Gonna Be a Mighty King, there's energy there. But when you watch the movie, like the energy just gets pulled out of it because the characters just have none. And that's not the actor's fault. It, it Like animation is this thing where like everybody has to be on the same page. And if they're not, like things get dissonant. And this is one of those examples where this music has like really bombastic really high energy and then all the act and then all the animation comes in and it's like no pull back let's not do that and it just makes you feel like your ears are my my it felt me feel like my, my ears are ringing like something was wrong and it just like made it hard to focus on like or, or made me over focus on things i really didn't want to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and uh, i similarly along with scar like simba is the main character of this movie and like he's voiced by donald glover and he doesn't get too much i mean even in the original movie i guess like adult simba is not as yeah Yeah, matthew broderick wasn't too much to sneeze at back then but like he kind of outshines donald glover he does but i think that's not donald glover's fault i think there's just like we they cut a lot of like of adult simba's kind of character moments you you kind of don't in this version there's not as much time for you to realize that simba is still simba like this is a completely different character than child simba in this movie like we don't have that scene with matthew broderick and rafiki where like he steals rafiki's stick like that's one of the funniest scenes in the original movie and and they, that's just not here at all yeah I'm, I, I'm trying to pin on because i th- i think and i'm sure that everybody can agree that the voice acting, there's something really off with it. And, you know, it might be like what you said, Sarah, like, you know, there's not too much happening animation wise for, you know, the human expression to come out. And I'm like, you know, is it the direction? Is it, you know, something else? Like what's going on? Because you can really tell in James Earl Jones's performance. I mean, granted the man is almost 90. So, you know, he's not going to be as bombastic as he was 20, 30 years ago, but you know, he is the common actor between the movies. And if you compare his voice acting in the original Lion King with this, it's just like 10% of what he was giving. And I'm like, what is going on here? Yeah, I, 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 but honestly, I just don't think it's right to put this on the voice actors. I think they did a good job. I think James Earl Jones, of all the actors, like he did a job, he, his voice acting matched the thing they animated. And his voice fits the Mufasa they animated here. Yeah, I'm it's not, I'm not trying to, like, blame them. I'm just no, like, no, 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 I know what you're is not, the reason but... why? Because I know, like, you know, Donald Glover's a good actor. I know that uh, Billy Eichner's a good actor. I know, like, you know, this movie is full of good actors. But they just don't have the emotion. And I'm wondering what along the lines went wrong. I just don't think there's communication between... This side, because because John Favreau, I don't want to put this in the director either. I think there's a lot that was going wrong in 
the communication. And I don't know who to put that on. But but just, just as an example of one of those things that John Favreau keeps saying that this is a live action movie. And the fact of the matter is it's not. Like when you have an animated movie, you have to do things in a very different way because you need to make sure that the actors who are acting in like essentially a cube by themselves, that their facial expressions, their energy is translated to the animation that somebody else somewhere completely different from you like they they translate that and it doesn't feel like there's any of that translation from the recording studio to what happens on screen it seems like whoever decided what happened there like they just kind of did it separately from what was ever recorded and it just doesn't feel right it it just feels like there was no understanding of what you need to do for animation like it it, it just feels really weird and i don't and i don't think it's any individual person's problem i just think that they came at this project from lately like, the, the the upper echelon because i don't think like the, i'm not saying like the animators or the actors like i'm saying just like whoever was moving the pieces around at disney like i think they just came at this project just from the wrong direction completely yeah i mean uh, now uh, it later on Sorry. in the in the media process was, they like kind of finally stopped trying to call it live action they started going like well it's like virtual reality films you know and oh we're just God. like doing this whole yeah. new style <laughs> like we don't know what to call it it's not animation but it's not live action so what is it so like uh, obviously it, this is a very unique piece of the tech this is like a big whole tech demo right it's like we'll probably get better movies of this style in the future based on the work that this movie has done and in that sense it's important but the, the, this is definitely a, a big uh a big step that requires a lot of working out kinks <laughs> as as we've got gotten through here right but um uh, I, well, one thing uh, in terms of differences in the movie, one positive that I, I do want to point out, like I, I, um, Sam mentioned Timon as uh, Billy Eichner and uh, the Pumba is Seth Rogen. I think that their interaction because they're they're de- the comedy characters, so they end up getting the most uh, changed in their dialogue, and I think that their rapport works pretty well in here. They decide to go in the direction of making them a little bit more meta, like they reference. The fact that Hakuna Matata is their signature song and uh, that they, they like sing Be Our Guest from <laughs> the different Disney That movies. is probably the funniest thing in this movie. Like I actually like laugh. I, I laughed out loud when that was on. Like that was really funny. Uh-huh. And, and so uh, and and they also have this whole thing about like p- picking holes at the whole circle of life thing. I think I had mentioned that in the previous podcast that I was like wondering like is Hakuna Matata meant to be like an anti- circle of life thing and it kind of and here like they like double down on it and like it's almost a nihilist point of view in terms of like you know nothing matters we're all gonna die like it's the the, it's the line that nature provides us so it's it it, it, it puts Hakuna Matata in a, a different lights compared to the original movie so I, I just find it interesting that with Timon and Pumbaa is where they decide to be the most uh, uh the most different and I think it pays off for them I think that Timon and Pumbaa uh, it's similar to the original, like when Timon and Pumbaa show up, like it adds a little bit, uh, a little bit of spice to what the movie had done so far. And here, I think it's the same thing. Where like because throughout the movie you'd been sticking very, very closely to line to similar dialogue, similar plot points. So once you get to Timon and Pumbaa like doing this improv out of nowhere, like it it feels a bit refreshing. So I, I think that Timon and Pumbaa do a good job in this. I don't know about you guys. If you have any thoughts uh... on them. I mean, you definitely shed some light for me personally on that comment you just made. So good job, Alex. Um, But while I was watching the movie, I didn't really feel that way. Mm. I kind of felt like, you know, there was something missing with their rapport. Like, really? Billy Eichner isn't Nathan Lane. And I'm not trying to make him be Nathan Lane in my mind. You know, Billy Eichner, I love him, love Billy on the street. I think he's, you know, a good guy. Uh, But for some reason his chemistry with Seth Rogen just isn't doing it for me. And I don't want to pin that on him and I don't want to pin that on Seth, but there's just something not clicking. Like what is going it's, on? Like it's the body language. There's no like Timon and Pumbaa, like have this great body language where they're clearly like a lot closer. And like, you just can't get that. Wow. You I can't think. make these animals gay. 
Like, no, but I, I think that's it. Like, I'm, I'm like, kind of joking, and I know you're kind of joking too, Sam, but I mean, yeah. like, I think that's it. <laughs> it I think might that's be. it. Like, there's just not the body language there. Because I think when, again, like, if you listen to the soundtrack, like, away from the visuals, like, the Akuna Matata works great. There's clearly, like, camaraderie there between Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah, but, like, when there's, like, spoken lines, for example, when they first find Simba. Like, yeah. And not, like, you know, kind of when they're like, oh, that's a lion. Like, should we take him? Should we keep him? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like... This isn't working for me. No, like, just doesn't. there's some, there's a lack of energy, which I, which we touched on before, but that's like when I really felt like it was a detriment to the movie. Cause, you know, whatever on Mufasa, Scar, okay, who cares? You, if you bring in your comic relief ca- characters, you want them to have energy and you want them yeah. to have, um, you know, something off the wall. And that's what you expect from Timon and Pumbaa. But it just isn't here. Like I, I think what it is, and after after we talked about it, I think I, un, I think I know how. Like, like I think I know what the disconnect is that I can't like process until we got to here. I think what it is is that all the actors are acting, except for James Earl Jones, he got the memo. Every other actor here is acting as if they're in the 1994 Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> like all, of the, like because they're not voice actors; they're just actors, yeah, yeah, and they're that's true. and they're like, hey, we know what the Lion King's like. We can do that. Oh and wait, we we need to pause. Seth Rogen is a voice actor. He was in Sausage Party. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, you get I'm my point, kidding. right? Like you get my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but and that's why James Earl Jones and I think even Scar for some amount works because his voice actor is. I, I I'm not going to try to say the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Scar's voice voice actor is a little more restrained just because of his voice. Like that's the guy's voice, and it works better for me. Um, I think that's the problem. Because Donald Glover and Beyonce, like, they're clearly trying to emulate the movie that was. But the movie that they're in is not that movie. Hmm. An in- interesting interpretation. Like, the thing, Beyonce it, is it, sorry, like... Sorry, it's only it's their fault. Like, I'm not saying it's their uh-huh. fault. They, the voice director should have told them not to do that. <laughs> sorry. Right, right. Well, like, Beyonce especially... I mean, she, she's obviously a, a singer primarily. She... Yeah. she did voice acting, I think, in Epic, a movie from, like, t- 10 years ago, but other than that, she hasn't really yeah. done much. She was but, an uh, Austin Powers gold member. Sure, 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 she's acted. She was but, in like, Dreamgirls. But, uh, well, I, I, I guess I guess the voice acting doesn't really um, uh, doesn't really connect here, because I think also the issue with Nala is that, like, you would, we kind of talked about her potentially getting more stuff to do, and the main thing that she gets extra is this scene of her sneaking sneaking away from Pride Rock that wasn't in the original. But other than that, it's kind of the same character in terms of not much going on with her besides we need you, Simba. So like I don't, as, but but like um, but Don, but Donald Glover, we, we we did talk about him. Like he's kind of kind of his usual relaxed self, and maybe that doesn't quite fit for <laughs> for like the. the the high energy that's supposed to, you're supposed to get out of the end. But I mean, I think it fits. I think it fits Simba from the 1994 Lion King. I do. I think they cast him like, Hey, this is the relaxed adult Simba from after the Akuna Matata scene. Like th- it works. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, but the thing is they changed it at some point where it's not that anymore. And I, I I just, I really don't want to put this on any individual person. It just feels like stuff doesn't line up anymore in this movie mm-hmm. in a really frustrating way. And I don't know how to, like, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know what, what the answer is here because I don't want to be so negative because, like, there's a lot of good stuff here. It just doesn't line up well together. Yeah. Well, what's some some other good stuff that we haven't talked about yet, Sarah? That you um, think with that, or, or Sam? Do you have? Yeah, Sam, do something, please. I've been talking a lot. Positive stuff from this movie. Uh, honestly, as much as I hate to say it, John Oliver was pretty good. Wow. Okay. I I know, but I know considering I don't care about John Oliver at all, and I I actively dislike him most of the time. But he was actually pretty good. It was probably one of the better voice performances in this movie granted i did not like zazu's design it creeped me out i don't like yeah. that flapping beak sort of thing mm-hmm. um but you know john oliver had a good performance uh i did enjoy the appearance of more animals in the little timon and pumba's oasis because it felt unrealistic to me that they would be alone there so i liked having you know little 
group of animals there. Like it was Ice Age or something. I like that. Um, yeah, that's that's the, the, that's some good things I can say about this movie. Okay. Uh, to also follow that up, I really enjoyed uh, the way that they really like like the original 1994 Lion King. I think it doesn't emphasize the fact that Hakuna Matata is supposed to be a direct um, like corollary to or, or not corollary like a an, an actual like rebuttal to the circle of life and this movie makes it very clear to the audience hey this is supposed to be like an opposing ideology not just like this fun song and i do enjoy that like i think it was nice of them to do that it might have been a little heavy-handed but i do like that they really like delved into that and said hey this is actually like a way of life other than the thing that we did at the very beginning that's very iconic um other than that, like, I think we talked about most everything. I liked, like, the Be Prepared sequence, which you weren't as hot on, Alex. Um, I liked the, I think the real-life animals really did it for, like, a lot of the action scenes. They were very scary, and I think that's what they were going for. I really enjoyed them a lot of the times. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's good stuff here. I just think that a lot of, yeah, I just think there's a lot of, I think there is a lot of good stuff here. Like, the animation is actually very good when you look at it in a vacuum, for example. Yeah, and wh- wh- one thing that stood out to me, especially in, in the Wildebeest uh, stampede, is that like now that these are more solid figures, so when animals get hit, like it feels a little bit more um, strong, you know, like when yeah. like Mufasa gets knocked off the rocks several times by these wildebeest. Oh, like, that was you can really paint. That was really big. Yeah, like you can feel the thuds a lot more, but um, because they're like, I so- kind of. I kind of laughed during that. Okay. Really? Okay. I thought it looked really funny. <laughs> well, I don't have any more comments besides that, but I thought him, like, Scar throwing him off the rock and him just falling was really funny. Oh, no, no, we're talking oh. about when the wildebeest were ramming into Mufasa. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that, that's a different story of, like, watching. Yeah, I, I, I think we have, we have not talked about that sequence yet, but I think we're getting yeah, there. Let, let, me, let me just finish the, the, the positives and we'll get back to that. <laughs> that's important. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, so, so the solidness works. And also, I think that when they, this is made to emulate a nature documentary. And I feel like when they focus on making, uh, like, doing nature stuff, it, actually works pretty well it's like wow this is pretty like for example the scene where they show the fur clump of simba working its way to rafiki oh, it's I, been I, it's uh, been memed on the, a lot of times maybe because it takes too long but i found it pretty like it was it's kind of like magical in the way of like hey like it's going through all these animals and hey here's a little dung beetle working its way around the rock we get to zoom in because we have this technology I, and like see the little push its little ball of poop like there's something that's, cute that's about that the almost. best in the movie honestly like not ironically okay, i you, i'm not alone it was okay interesting that they decided to put a poop joke in the middle of the movie like i don't think that was a joke though i don't think the poop joke was a joke i, I, I think it might have been a joke well like, it's, it was, ki- it's I, kind I of a like joke it. because hey p- the giraffe pooped it poop out is but also it's like buying into hey this is nature like this yeah. is how the cycle works and, and I, think, I want more of that. But I think the scene doesn't... It, like, the scene is fine with that part. Like, I think the thing that breaks the scene is Rafiki. Because he just picks up the hair, and then there's, like, two more seconds of the scene, and he's like, Simba's back, and then just cuts away. Like, like it's like, that doesn't work. Like, you need to have a little more buildup of him, like, realization, like, what this means. Because that's what's in the original movie. Yeah, and it's yeah. so frustrating that it has all this great buildup with this nature documentary-esque scene, and then it just leads up to nothing, essentially. Yeah. Um, le- speaking of leading up to nothing or something, um, let's go back to that scene where, uh, where Mufasa is hanging by the cliff, Scar digs his claws in, long live the king, and pushes him off, and we see Simba go, no! <laughs> like, but like, it's like, very, it's like kind of a cut off no, it- almost, and like the zoom out is like so, <laughs> so okay. like, uh, animation versus photorealistic, it works a little differently. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, I I think I can go back to, like, I think this leads back to what I was talking about, like, at the beginning, where I was, like, animals are better at certain emotions than others if you have real-life animals. Like, the fear, the aggressiveness, the, um like, maybe the vulnerableness, like, you know that. Like, the cats have that, like, really great ability to use their whole body for those emotions. It's not quite as good with this kind of thing, <laughs> and which is the problem with the seed. Like, you can't really express grief on the face of a lion quite in the same way 
as you could in the original anthropomorphized version of Simba screaming and being li- like that original scene is horrifying. Like you're, it's terrifying the way that Simba screams, and you just have none of that here, just because you can't with the way they were trying to make Simba. You just can't. Uh, it's just funny. Yeah. Well, Hello? Sam, at what part did you specifically laugh? At Mufasa falling or at Simba's yeah, no? At Mufasa falling. Okay. Like I could, I could care less about the no, but Mufasa falling just looked hilarious to me. <laughs> I thought it looked pretty identical to the original movie. What did you find funny? About? I, I feel like I was talking to Michelle about, it and she said it also. Like, or so, I was talking to somebody about it. I was like, yeah, it was kind of identical to it. I don't know what it was about the original, but, like, there's a difference between just seeing a real life lion falling and, like, guess, a cartoon lion true. falling. Like, if your cat fell like that, you would laugh, like, a little okay. bit. You'd be like, oh, honey, are you okay? <laughs> you fell. So, yeah, that, that's my logic behind that. I, um, I, I get your point. When you describe, cause if Kiora fell I would like that, I would definitely laugh. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> like, I'd be like, are you okay? And then just, like, run over and pet her, and then that would be it. Yeah, yeah. so it's... I'm not advocating for harming your animals. No, 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 but, like, Kiora has Listeners. definitely, like, rolled off of, like, a, a chair or something. Yeah, 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 cats fall all the time, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, like, they, 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 they're very good at understanding their environments most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time, but not all of the time. Yeah, how how would they react if they knew there were wildebeest running below them? I mean, I don't know. How um, could they? Probably, like, be really scared. I don't know. Yeah. Probably. Also, so, something I noticed, not to take your, your, your moderation powers away from you, Alex. Oh, well, well, just, just before you move on to something different, I just yeah. want to point out quickly that later in the movie, they go back to this scene, make it slow-mo. There's, like, kind of shaky cam. Like, oh, my God. Scar, Scar admits, like, I killed him. And then we see the, the replay of this in slow-mo. And, like, it looks even worse because this, yeah, this no, animation is not made bit. to be in slow-mo. And I just wanted to get that out of the way because it was so ridiculous when they, like, cut well, into that in the middle of the fight. Yeah. Uh, My thing also piggybacks off of that, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Um, so you know how later on Simba's like, "Oh yeah, I killed Mufasa," and he like admits it to Sarabi and stuff. Did he not see Scar like at all? Did he just see like his dad fall off the cliff and he didn't see Scar push him? Was no, that the whole didn't. point? Yeah, he didn't see Scar. Wow, I'm like 25 years late to that. Jeez. Yeah, no, he didn't see Scar. Like that—that that was in the original movie too. I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, like it was. That, it's, that, that, that was. The, they, they do I, I, a job of, like, showing that, like, he's at a different angle from, like, where yeah. the, the fall happens, so, like, I guess that's enough. It's better, um, I think it's better expressed in the original that it shows it, but I mean, I guess Sam missed it, it there, too. I, I, maybe I was just too hype about, like, these lions, like, like lions and lions are my favorite animals. To... I mean, like, that is completely fair. But, like, I just, I can't believe I didn't notice that. <laughs> You learn something new every day, kids. Even if you've watched your favorite movie a billion times and it takes a live action remake. I mean, I, I guess like like sure. honestly, like watching the same movie over and over and over again kind of like just reinforces the things like you saw wrong the first time sometimes. Like you would yeah. just keep thinking like there it is, there's where Simba sees Scar do it. I'm yeah. Just... Um I'm sorry, Sam. It's not your fault, it's my fault for not noticing. I mean, like, just think of all the emotions this adds to it now, Sam, when you rewatch it next time. I have emotions about that. <laughs> That's so stupid. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. Uh, one part that we haven't really talked about are the hyenas. We, we have uh, yeah. Keegan Michael Key and Eric Andre as, like, a duo. And then you have the. Uh, the previous uh, Whoopi Goldberg voice. Now this is a, a new person. She's kind of more of a it, more of a leader in this situation. A lot more. Like, and she even the movie like speaks that way when Nala like fights her later. Hmm. Yeah. So, and, any any feelings about the hyenas translation here? Uh, I liked Shinzi. It was a uh, Florence Kazumba, I believe. Okay. Um, I liked her, even though I have seen people on Twitter be like, "Oh, they." replaced you know the original which was in eh, comic relief but you know still kind of more depth to like giving her three lines and just making her like mean and stuff and i was like oh yeah they have a point i didn't really care about kika michael key or eric andre 
you know, you like in real life, you know, they're they're fine actors, of course, but it just felt like oh, they're they're here. They didn't really have too much to do. They had maybe two lines or so. But, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Jeez, Sarah, <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, I mean this I, is I, what I do. Yeah, they they just didn't really do it for me. It didn't feel like they added anything that Timon and Pumbaa didn't already add. Um, mm-hmm. in the original, I guess you can also say that in regards to um, Ed and what's his face, Cheech Marin. I don't remember what his hyena's. They changed hyena uh, names. Ba- ba- yeah, Bonsai, for some reason. Probably. Oh, Bonsai and Ed. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You could say that they also didn't add anything to that. Which yeah, whatever. Who knows? I wasn't too much of a fan. You go, Sarah. What do you have to say? Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I- yeah, I just hear you sighing over there. I'm like, oh, God, what did I say wrong? No, 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 I agree with everything you're saying, and I'm just really upset. <laughs> I'm just, like, the hyenas as a whole, like, the animals that they used are great. Like, they look really scary, and they look really um, intimidating. But I don't know. Like, the, and in some scenes, that works really well in favor of what they're trying to do, and sometimes it just doesn't match what they're, what the, like, sometimes they'll, like, they just shift from being like these scary things to comic relief in a way that just doesn't really work for the movie. It it just doesn't work. And that's just kind of the story of this movie in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with that, uh, anything major? The, I, I guess just uh, briefly, uh, also something that has angered the internet is that the Mufasa cloud doesn't actually look like Mufasa in this oh! version. It's just a cloud. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. That upsets me, okay? Oh, oh okay. Does it? Does it? No, yes, it does. Yeah, not, ex- not that it doesn't look like a cloud. That it, that it exists to begin with in this movie still? Because, okay, we're not allowed to have a tower of animals, but we're allowed oh, to have okay, a ghost yeah. lion talk to people. Like, what is what are the rules of this universe of the movie? Like, if like if you're gonna sus- if I can suspend my disbelief for a ghost lion talking, like I can suspend my disbelief for an energetic musical scene. Like, I don't know what the point of this movie is. Like, I don't know what they're trying for. I don't know what it just upsets me. Okay, it just they don't have hard lines here on what they're trying to do, and that's another part of the problem. They don't really have a clear vision of what they're going for. Yeah, like, I, I I can sort of see the argument where you're like, well, we still need the cloud scene, but to keep it in this little realistic box that we're working for, we can't we can't go too far and, like, make it look like him. But you're right, like, if it, this is still, like, kind of a, a supernatural thing, so if we're still keeping yeah. that, then, like, why are we restricting ourselves to this box in the first place? Yeah, and that's my that's my whole issue with this movie, honestly. Like, they it just doesn't seem like it seems like they went the first step of saying we want to do this and then they didn't think about the consequences of each thing. Like, like if you want to make this gritty Lion King reboot, you can do it. You just have to change a lot of things. Like you can change this scene to be like Rafiki just speaking with Simba. And I think it works just as well if you're doing this more serious movie, but you need to commit to that, which they don't do in any way. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm just I'm just frustrated because they need to they need to just make a choice with this movie and they never did. Yeah, yeah. So this movie exists. It will make a lot of money. It will maybe. It's get already Oscar made nomination. a lot of money. Oh no! Yeah. It already made a ton of money. And yeah. honestly, I think it deserves to get a nomination for animation. It's just the animation doesn't fit the movie that they made. Like, there's a lot of amazing work here they did animation wise. Really. I'm yeah, really te- te- technologically, really... it's it's an accomplishment. It, it might oh, yeah. get a, a nomination for original song because we Beyonce did be, get a I, song I, in there. Uh, no, no thanks. <laughs> your, your thoughts on Spirit? All right, Spirit, so. I hate it. It sounds like every single pop ballad that has come out yep. in the past five or Agreed. so years. Which you know, whatever Disney has done this sort of thing in the past and in the in the present, where they have you know big name sort of pop star either cover a song from the movie or contribute an original song um either via the credits or i guess in this case it's in the movie it's almost always like been spirit. in the credits yeah it's almost always in the credits see christina aguilera singing reflection from mulan um but it doesn't it's it's i'm just disappointed and i know beyonce wasn't the sole person who worked on it 
And, you know, that's fine, but it's a, really a step back in terms of her music career for me. I mean, obviously, she's not going to, like, care about this a year from now when she has a new album out. She probably doesn't care about this, like, a month from now. Yeah, like, I, like, I don't expect her to. Like, it's just something that she did. Um, But I feel like it was, like, you know, when you hear Beyonce, you expect, like, oh, she's going to do something really different and something out of the box. But then again, this is also a Disney movie, so probably not. Um, but then you have The Gift, which is the music inspired by album that came out alongside of the movie. Um, think the uh, Black Panther music inspired by soundtrack that Kendrick Lamar did. I thought The Gift was pretty great. Um, Beyonce songs on it, I'm not too keen on. She did help like produce and curate it. Uh, but, you know, I thought it was way better <laughs> and fit the tone of the movie way more than all of the other songs in this entire film. So there's that. My favorite song is Scar. Uh, but there's a song just called Scar. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's, it's from like Scar's perspective. I think it's really great. It's huh. really, it's probably the best song on the album. Um, so that's that on that. And also I want to point out, uh, I, we brought this up earlier. I just want to say just before we end off here, yeah. uh, the, um, vocals and can you feel the love tonight? Much, much, uh, much talked about in terms of Beyonce overshadowing Donald Glover, and I just want to say it also attributes for me personally that whole entire scene missing the point. Yep. Um, because if you listen to the original, if you listen to even like you know Elton John's single version, if you listen to the version from the musical, it's supposed to be this sort of breathless, like you know, we all have you know, something to gain, something to lose from this interaction between them two. And they both have secrets, uh, Nala and Simba, that they can't, like, tell each other, yada, yada, yada. And it's supposed to be, you know, romantic and more light, not about how hard you can sing. And, <laughs> yeah, like, the original song, it's, like, almost a whisper. Like, yeah. it's, like, they're, it, it's, it's, the song is almost a question to each other about, like, who they are, who they've become in the years they haven't seen each other, and this version almost kind of misses that. I, f- I feel like, strangely enough, Donald Glover does a better job. I agree. Beyonce. I think Beyonce made this a Beyonce song when the song is an Elton John song. Yeah, and like, again, and... I don't think that's the actor's fault. I think they needed to be told to do it differently. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, <laughs> it, this, this movie upsets me on a lot of levels, because I'm not <sighs> sure who I'm supposed to be upset about upset just at about it upset at just disney on the whole for yeah making this thing i also just hate that they use can you feel the love tonight and like the commercials and the promos and stuff yeah at least the ones that i saw like why would you use that song like, like you're kind oh, of building it up to be like the great summer romance movie when it's not not also before we like since we're talking about the voice actors like i want to say the kid voice actors are incredible yeah like, they the kid, were really good the kid simba and kid nala like they sound almost identical in like a great way like it, in like I mean this in like the best way possible to the original actors. Like they're so good. They're like they completely capture that like childlike glee and childlike wonder in the world around them. And they just I, I don't know. I really they're really good. I just want well, to make, um, make that the, the the kid Nala um Shahadi Wright Joseph. She was actually Nala in one of the Broadway productions. Oh okay. So I did not know yeah that. it yeah it makes sense that she would do a yeah, great job because she like <laughs> knows the role. Um, oh was, yeah. Kids Simba, let me scroll up here. JD McCrary, who is known for question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> well, he was great. Like I thought he did a great job with the song that he had, and it was just I don't know. I, I thought he captured Simba really well in the end. I, I think there were times when he when the animation matched his energy like almost perfectly. And that's great. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, with that, I think we will begin to sign off unless, I mean, you guys seem to have gotten off your final thoughts or like anything uh, else you, you guys want to uh, talk about. Is there any other nitpick I can squeeze out of this movie that I yes. desperately yeah, need yeah. to say? Uh, okay. My favorite scene of the original movie is the ending when they have like the whole fight with the fire and that stuff. Oh yeah. I thought that this movie did that scene right. For me personally, that was the one part where I was actually like impressed yeah. by the animation and by what, what what I was seeing on the screen. Um, not to say, of course, you know, it's not not impressive that they could render all of these lions and the fur and like the animals and stuff. I think that's cool, 
But the, I guess the nature of, I don't know, like the world today and how CGI is treated. You know, you see CGI animals here, there, and everywhere. And Disney already did this sort of thing with dinosaur, like, 20 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not, like, it's not new news. But, you know, it's still impressive that they managed to do, uh, you know, all these 3D lines. I am still impressed by that. I just didn't think it worked out the way that people seeing the movie and also probably people who made the movie wanted it to. So that's that on that. That, That's my Lion King final thought. Impressive. uh, Technically, other stuff, not so much. I'd give it a 39% if I was Rotten Tomatoes (laughs) algorithm. Um, I think it's actually like a 55 or something. Well, I would give it a 39 Okay, uh, Sarah. Uh, I wouldn't give the, like this is not really a nitpick this or like a this is just like a point that I'm not sure I'm not sure where it lies. So I wanted to bring it up. Uh, they changed one of the most I think iconic scenes from the movie, and we kind of we touched on it, and that's the uh, where they sang "Be Our Guest" this time. Last in the in the previous version of the movie, they um, specifically say that Timon's going to dress in drag and they do and do the hula, and they do that, and. That clearly would not fly today, like or, or or people would think it wouldn't fly today. But honestly, I don't think there was anything wrong with that scene, and it didn't need to change. Like if if they didn't do it because of like worry about like worry about uh, outrage for it, like that was the wrong reason to change it. Because I think the scene was funny and honestly fine. But I mean, I guess it just didn't fit the idea of realistic animals. I guess yeah, maybe it was too out of place. Like, like, I, I was just curious if you guys had any opinions on that, because I personally, like, I thought, like, in the original, like, when I, when I watched that movie again, like, when we did the podcast, like, mm-hmm. I thought it was fine. Like, I didn't yeah, think there was anything like, wrong with that scene. I thought it was fine, too. Um, the replacement of the BR guest thing, I kind of groaned. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I thought it was funny, but I mean, like, it, ju- humor is very subjective. Like, I don't think there's... Yeah, a- I don't think anything is funny. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think it fits the direction they kind of took these characters of making them a little bit more meta. So, like, using a yeah. different Disney song fits their, their the vibe that they're giving these characters in, in terms of, like, remixing them. So, I, I, I thought it fit enough. Yeah, but I'm just, like, I hope they didn't, like, not include the hula thing just because they thought people would be upset. Because the thing is, the original movie, like... The joke isn't that, like, Timon's in drag. The joke is that he would do this. Like, it, it it's not really at the expense of anybody, the joke. I think the joke is kind of also in the original movie that it's, like, really out of place to do that. And, oh, yeah. Like, it, the it, African it, Savannah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely out of place. But, I mean, like, I, it fit the tone, I think, of Disney musicals at the time. Like, yeah, there was yeah, all definitely. Out of place stuff. Yeah, definitely. Especially in the wake of Aladdin, which, you know, you had Robin Williams doing all his stuff, yeah. you know. Like, they um, preference. Yeah, that sort of affected all movies um, after it. You know, Hunchback Notre Dame. Uh, I'm sure something in Pocahontas, unfortunately, has anachronistic ha-has like that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it felt very much of its time, but it also felt funny. And, you know, I felt like, yeah, whatever, watching it back um, again. And I, I, I honestly don't think it was like, oh, we can't do the drag thing. Because okay. somebody's gonna get offended. Uh, like, I, I was just curious if, if yeah, I was just curious because like I mm-hmm. don't think it was, but I was curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me personally, I don't think so. I think as much as Disney likes to protect their brand, TM, and how they're slowly getting woke or something along those lines in terms of um, uh, gay characters, etc. As, as they erase any gayness in Scar's character. Yeah, yeah. for real, right? We still had yeah. the Jungle Cruise movie that's supposed to have a gay character, right? Uh, uh, so people are excited about that. Are they? I, I'm not. I have <laughs> no opinion whatsoever. I, no I, clue I don't what know what a Jungle is Cruise is. You're like, I, don't like know, I don't know what movie you're even talking about. That, that says a lot for how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's like a movie based off of a ride. From no, no, I know, I, I, I know what Jungle Cruise the ride is. I didn't know they were making a movie based Yeah, on they're it. making a movie based on it, and there's supposed to be a gay character in it. Oh, wow. Big, big, yeah. big franchise. Yeah, big, big franchise to stick a gay character in, right? Yeah. Boop, boop. I, uh, 
in yeah. the in the original Lion King, there was a plot point early in the script process of Scar coming on to Nala that eventually got removed. So I find it quite a bold move to reintroduce Scar <laughs> needing a queen uh, coming into the yeah, that version. Was, it's, that it's, felt uh, really no hope though. Yeah. So good, yeah. Good. Good job by you guys for making scar that. Um, I yeah. mean, I not to you know derail further, but I will say, in terms of that scene, I felt it was fine to add it in. You know, I was always like, oh, why does Nala come? Why is it just like dry and weird? And you know, they explained it. So now oh, there you go. But did it need its flavor? <laughs> um, no. Not really, I guess, but. I liked having that there. Yeah, yeah. It and worked Z- for Zazu me. Zazu does a fun callback joke in the middle to like distract this uh, woodpecker person, friend, or yeah, he has a cousin who's who thought he was a woodpecker or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What does so, that mean? He mm. it means that he kept knocking his head, like he made the joke about the beaks or whatever. Mm. Really makes you think. <laughs> really makes you think. Uh, yeah, my, my my final thought. I went. I watched this in one of those fancy theaters that sell f- actual <laughs> food, but unfortunately, they were out of cheese, which I've never heard at a restaurant before. Same. So I ended up just getting a burger. I was gonna get the bacon cheese fries because, like, I've heard those are good there. But instead, I just got a burger. But the burger was really good. It had like some bacon and some nice barbecue sauce, some onion. So it was it was interesting to be able to like eat and drink. Drink a sangria while I'm watching a movie on a big screen. That was new. Probably overrated, but it was new. And this Lion King is new, but maybe it's overrated because <laughs> the newness isn't enough to bring to make me feel like I got the value out of spending an hour and a lot. Was this two hours? It, it was two yes, hours, right? It was yeah. two hours. Yeah, it was, yeah, so I don't think it was one fifty eight. It was one hour and fifty eight minutes. I don't think I got the proper value out of what I expect the two-hour movie to be. The uh, the additions don't feel like enough to warrant it. It made me feel emotionally empty inside. There's some nice stuff here, and I'm excited as a fan of animation for what this opens up for the future in like five, ten years from now. It will be interesting to see, but just this is what we have, and... This exists. We're gonna keep the road of re- Disney remakes until we like get down um, to like the most obscure Disney movies. Uh, we're gonna make like Atlantis again. I don't know. No, no. What uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna re remake movies at some point. Maybe. Oh, God. Uh, well, we'll have to go back to Cinderella. <laughs> They're gonna <laughs> so do this... 101 Dalmatians again. Well, well, I mean, the doing Cruella is... Bill. That's not a joke. Yeah, there is a Cruella ah! in production already. <laughs> oh, I hate so... it. Why? <laughs> So yeah, I, so I, I, I was trying to think of like Disney movies that had mostly exclusively animals. I was like, oh, like Fox and Hound, uh, whatever. I was like, oh yeah, the One Hundred One Dalmatians. That had a movie that had like real puppies. Yeah, so really, now we need to get into the gritty backstory of Cruella de Vil. <laughs> yeah, and we need CGI the gritty, puppies. The gritty backstory of skinning puppies. Yeah, maybe like a like a Dalmatian like attacked her when she was a kid or something. Oh, I hope so. So she has like um vowed vengeance on her like leg or whatever. Maybe like they messed up her leg or something. Oh, and I... she vowed vengeance and she was gonna make a coat out of them. So yeah, there you go. I wrote your movie for you, Disney. Good give job. us money or give Sam money. Yeah. <laughs> Well, give us mm-hmm. all money when we make it. I, I, I yeah, I would like money. <laughs> pay me to see this movie again. Oh yeah, that yeah. Great. No, pay me for having seen it already, please. Yeah, I can't get that time back. Uh, give me money to set up a live action, uh, the virtual animation remake of Lion King one and a half. Oh I, my god! I think that god. that's what we need in our lives. Just, it is uh, we... Give Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen their own movie. Oh and my god! They don't have can... any chemistry. <laughs> No, but this or or better yet, let's just dress them up in life size costumes. That'll be funnier, right? Like we just I have think, Seth Rogen totally in a Pumbaa better. costume. Like, that'd be great. We can it do that. It, just put it on put on Eric Andre's show. Just, the, 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 the no, synergy. just have it be Billy on the street. Just have it be Billy Eichner like with yeah, a microphone did. in in a meerkat outfit, running around with Seth Rogen in a warthog outfit, like oh. just running around. Oh, yeah. we need to tag Billy Eichner in this. So he looks, <laughs> great so he idea. Like I am this not. This is a very original idea. 
at Billy Eichner. Um, do this for a uh, Billy on the Street segment. Yeah, just have them run around in two giant animals, animal costumes. It yeah, I know. I know that you know Seth Rogen. You've done things with him before. You can do it. I believe in you. Love Sam. Yeah. P.S. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Um, with that, uh, you can find out the info on this podcast at overlyanimated.com. You can join us on Discord to chat about animation at overlyanimated.com slash Discord. We include an animated films channel as well as many other shows that we cover. Um, you can support us by Patreon at patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Taylor, a.k.a. Needle. Um, oh, good, yeah, Needle's going to be happy. Good, Good job by you for if, if you listen this long, uh, needle, needle, and, <laughs> just uh, needle, maybe yeah. just, still I mean, Well, th- thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers Ryan, Steve, Beatrice, you and Michael. If you've listened this far, that means that you enjoy uh, listening to us ramble about uh, about different pieces of animation. Uh, other than this, we talk about Final Space. That's a show that's going on right now. Yeah, we've got a miraculous ladybug. We've got uh, Infinity Train that's about to chug back in soon. Um, mo- movie wise, uh, we also in, in Disney we recently discussed uh, Toy Story Four. You can probably catch up on that. Oh yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the, the, Disney will have lots of movies for us to talk about uh, whenever um, on. Well, what's the onward com- comes out we'll we'll have to maybe we'll talk about that i don't know but uh, oh yeah, yeah those are the little troll boys yeah 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 the, the, i little, forgot uh, the, the chris pratt your favorite oh um, god no i hate it i hate him and so until we have another movie to talk about we will talk, talk to you later but until then thanks for listening goodbye bye bye